Hi, so I thought I'd do a little bit of a follow-up on these two plasma cutters because I had a few comments where people were saying, oh, you've just disabled the over temperature protection and it won't work and the, the resistor should have been in series and, and all this kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get one of these, I'm going to put it on the bench, I'm going to disconnect the thermocouple from the heatsink, put it on another little heatsink that I can then heat up and cool down and then we'll see exactly what happens, see if the modification works as I thought it would work or if people in the comments are right. So I think it might be interesting. So I'll get it on the bench and then we'll give it a try. I'll spin this round. Right, so we're into it again. And there's my little modification there. So I'm just going to disconnect the thermocouple again. Right, so there's the thermocouple. So I'm just going to get a heatsink and we'll just screw it onto an external heatsink, just a small one, so it'll be easier to heat that up and down instead of heating up this big block under here. Right, I'm just going to get a heatsink. Right, back with the heatsink. And what I've also done, I've put a bit black tape on it here because we can then use the thermal camera and we can actually measure what temperatures that this unit will actually cut out and back in on. So we can get the thermal camera because with the heatsink being aluminium and reflective, it probably won't work that good with the thermal camera, but the black will. So that's the reason why I've put tape on there. So let's couple this up. Right, something a bit like that. And I'll see if I can get something just to support it out of the way. Right, one moment please. Right, I've got the heat sink and that all set up now. And if we just measure it with the thermal camera. So this is my new Kawitz KTI W02, which is 256 by 192 resolution. And it also does mixed visible light and infrared as well, so you can get a bit more clearer picture there. So yeah, so about 24 degrees. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug this in. I'm going to switch it on. And then the first thing I'm going to do is use some freezer spray and we'll try cooling this down just to see what happens. Let's see what temperature that is now then. Let's see it's about 14 degrees. Let's see what we've got now. Oh, we've got about one degree there. And if we notice, it's still working fine, the light hasn't tripped. If I press the gun, it should still operate. You can hear it operating there. I haven't got the compressor or anything hooked up at the minute, this is just to, show, just to purely show you the, uh, the temperature side of things. Right, what's the temperature now then? It's about five degrees. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to clean any condensation off this and then we'll use the hot air gun and we'll heat this up just to see what happens there. Right, hot air gun. Let's just warm this up a bit. And if we notice I don't know if you can hear there, the fan's just kicked in on it. Let's see what temperature we're getting now. So we're about 33 degrees. And the fan's kicked in. Let's give it some more heat. Let's 
Let's see what it's up to now then. That's about 73. Right, let's came up with the overheat error and error 2. And that's about, about 90 degrees. So let's see if it's... No, nope, it no, will no longer spark up. You can't hear the... And it's just flashing error 2. Now it's locked out until that cools down, until you power cycle it as well. Even if you cool it down, it won't actually come away from this error. At least that's what I think anyway. Let me try it. Still error 2. Let's see what the temperature is now. And we're about 40 degrees. So if I power cycle it now, just wait for it to discharge a moment. And now switch it back on. We should be back to normal operation. Apart from the fans on, because I still think it's slightly warm. If I cool that down a bit more. And we'll just give it a moment, the fan should switch off. It's still at 39. Still at 40 degrees, that's why. Right, hopefully that fan should stop in a moment. Right, there we go. Fan stopped. Right, so I'll just give a quick explanation about, because I had a couple of people saying, oh, you should have wired the resistors in series instead of parallel and why that won't work. So I'll just draw a little diagram and I'll show you why that's not right. Right, so this is in effect what I've done. So the NTC, as the temperature increases, the resistance lowers. So let's say we get to 90 degrees, for instance, this NTC might be 10 ohms. Well, imagine now, we'll put a 10 ohm resistor across here. That's pretty much gonna just <laughs> bypass these. So we'll just get a reading of roughly 10 ohms on here, give or take. So that's why these are wired in parallel. And it means if this goes higher than 14k or 15k, we're still going to have 10.4k across it. So it's not going to really drop below that because these resistors are fixed. If we put them in series, then that would cause problems because what would, in effect, would have something like this. And if that was... 14k let's say if this went to 10 ohms it wouldn't make any difference because we've always it's always going to be you know roughly 14k plus whatever this value is so if that was 15k we'd have 29k in the circuit if this dropped down to 10 ohms which is when it sort of triggers the over temperature protection then it would never get that low because we'd have 14k plus 10 ohms so we'd have you know 14.01k or whatever it is so that's why putting it in series wouldn't work so i hope that explains it all and you know just to let you know that we're hopefully not going to burn anybody's house down so right i think that'll conclude this video for now then so if you enjoyed this video please give it the thumbs up if you want to see more like it please subscribe any comments or questions please leave it in the comment section below and as always have a great day thanks for watching